Hello everyone, welcome to another YouTube video. So in this video, we'll talk about why do we need to encode and decode or reconstruct inputs. So the previous video I did explain about what is autoencoder and now we need to understand why we need to encode and decode or reconstruct the input. So there are many various applications such as I mentioned no little reduction, data compression and image image denoising and more. So since the auto encoder reconstructs the inputs, the number of nodes in the input and output layers are always the same. So let's assume we have a data set that contains a hundred input features. And we have a neural network with an input layer of 100 units, a hidden layer of 50 units, and an output layer with 100 units. So when we feed the data set to the autoencoder, the encoder will try to learn the important features in the data set and reduce the number of features to 50 and forms the bottleneck. So the bottleneck holds the representations of the data that is the embedding of the data and encompasses only the necessary information then the bottleneck is fed to the decoder to, con to reconstruct the original input so if the decoder reconstruct the ori original input successfully then it means that the encoder has successfully learned the encoding of all the representations of the given input. That is, the encoder has successfully encoded or compressed the data set of 100 features into a, pre a pre presentation with only 50 features by capturing the necessary information. So essentially, the encoder tries to learn to reduce dimensionality of the data without losing the useful information. So we can think of the autoencoders as similar to dimensionality reduction techniques, such as principal component analysis, which is PCI. So in PCI, we project the data into a low dimension using the linear transformation and remove the features that are not required. The difference between PCI and, out, and an autoencoder is that PCI uses the linear transformation for dimensionality reduction, while the autoencoder uses a nonlinear transformation. And apart from dimensionality reduction, autoencoders are also widely used for denoising noise in the image audio and so on. So we know that the encoders in the auto encoder reduces the dimensionality of the data set by learning only necessary information and forms the bottleneck or code. Thus, when the noisy image is fed as an input to the auto encoder, the encoder learns only the necessary information of the image and forms the bottleneck since the encoder learns only the important and necessary information to represent the image, it learns the noise is unwanted information and removes the representations of noise from the bottleneck. Thus, now we have a, we will have a, a bottleneck that is a representation of the image without any noise information. When this learn representation of the in of the encoder, that is the bottleneck is fed to the decoder. The decoder will construct, reconstruct the input image from the encodings produced by the encoder. Since the encodings have no noise, the reconstructed image will not contain any noise. So in summary, autoencoders map our data of a high dimension data to a low level representation. This low-level data representation of data is called as latent representations or bottleneck, which have only meaningful and important features that represent the input. 
since the role of our autoencoder is to reconstruct its input, we use uh, reconstruction errors as our loss function, which implies we try to understand how much of the input is probably properly reconstructed by the decoder. So we can use the square error loss as our loss function to quantify the performance of autoencoders. And that is all in this video, so I hope you enjoy it. And please press subscribe, like, and comment on this video if you like it. And also press the bell button to get the notification for the new information and also new video update. And that is all in this video, and I will see you in the next video.